Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com and today we're talking about VW Intake Manifold Updates. About a month ago, VW finally updated one of the most common failing parts on the two liter TSI engines, the intake manifold. This is a, an original intake manifold, very early revision. Well, they just finally updated it and it's updated with something a little bit beyond just being clean. So what I figured we would do today is talk about some of the really important and I think pretty beneficial updates and some of the things that may not mean anything. This all came about based on a conversation that I had with my buddy Paul that you guys know from Shop DAP. He's been a great supporter of the show, a great resource for all of us in the VW Audi community. That's one of the first places I go for VW parts. So Paul, thank you very much for bringing this to my attention so I can share the info with everybody else. And I'll be sure to put a link down in the description so you guys can check out Paul. Him and I have done some really great videos together and I appreciate all of his support of, again, our community and specifically of me and my show. So Paul, thanks dude, I appreciate you. Let's get into the intake manifold. So like I mentioned, this is the original one. This has been a pretty common failing part for a long time, and it fails in a couple of different ways. I've actually done a video on all the ways that it fails. I'll be sure to link that up if you want to check that out. Boy, is it an old video. I think it's the first or second failed parts video that I ever did. So much has changed since then, but still check that out because it's a really good video and goes over all the failures. And I think in the update, they've actually addressed pretty much most of the failures. Really the biggest way the manifold fails is failure of the intake runner or the intake flaps at the part of the manifold that bolts to the cylinder head. And this can be anything from failure of the sensor, failure of the flaps themselves, either breaking or overextending and going past their stop location, or this little arm here that connects the vacuum actuator to the flaps can break off. So what we're looking at here, this is the old one. You can see the old sensor made in Germany, the flaps, and then the arm on the actuator. When we move to the new one, we see that we have an updated sensor made in Romania instead of Germany. The flaps themselves look pretty darn similar to what was in the old style. And then one of the biggest, most noticeable changes is the actuator arm is completely different. The actuator is pretty similar in construction, but the arm itself is very different. And unfortunately, it's not really possible without cutting this one open, and I'm not cutting a brand new intake manifold open, to see exactly how it's attached here from the actuator arm to the flap. But you can see that it's considerably different. This is great because this does eliminate a pretty high failure point. As we move up the vacuum actuator to the solenoid, we notice that the solenoid is different as well. There's basically an extra vacuum fitting on here, which should just be a fitting for a vent. You'll notice on the old one, there is an actual vent at the bottom. This one looks just a little bit different. It's got a metal nipple on it. The vacuum feed side goes to the other side, so this will be left open. The clips that hold the fuel rail on where the injectors are is also a little bit different. They have like a support bracket on them now where they don't on the old one. As we flip the manifolds over, we'll notice that there's really not much different at all. It does look like the finish on the plastic may be a little bit different. To me, that generally means that the composite, all the junk they mix together to actually form these manifolds is probably going to be different on the new version versus the old version. I hadn't ran into any of these cracking or causing issues, but anytime something is plastic or really, let's face it, any material, there's always going to be failure points. That one wasn't one that I'd ever ran into. I do want to dive in a little bit deeper into the flaps because there's a couple of things that are really interesting. Like I mentioned, the sensors are different. We have German made on the old style and Romanian made on the new style. This shouldn't change anything about the way it reads or the way it's interpreted. It's just a different sensor. The really fascinating part is the stop points of the flaps. On the old style, it's basically encased inside the runner of the manifold, so you don't actually see where the stop is. One of the concerns we've seen on these is the flaps hyperextending and actually going past their stop points. It looks like on the new manifold, that problem's been corrected. Now they look like they have very hard, definitive stops, 
where it's gonna take a lot and a lot of wear in order to make those go past their stopping points. So I'm really excited about that. That might actually take care of the majority of the problems that we've been seeing. The other really minor thing that I noticed is on the old style, this cell between the runners is closed. On the new style, it's open. That's probably due to having a different positioning of the stops for the flap. Again, it looks like it's a little bit more robust of a stop than the old style had. So as you can see, there's a few differences. It's, we haven't reinvented the wheel or anything like that, but I think that these minor changes should really do well to handle some of the problems that we've been having over on these manifolds for a long, long, long time. Remember, there's a warranty extension on a lot of these cars. So again, this applies to the two liter turbo TSI engines on VW specifically, uh, CCTA, CBFA engine codes. It probably applies to Audi as well. And to answer the question that I know is gonna come up, Charles, can I get this manifold replaced with the updated part without having a failure? Odds are, no, you're not gonna be able to. You gotta wait till failure in order to get the new manifold under warranty. If you're paying for it, you can get it right now if you'd like. Uh, I'm sure anybody would be more than happy to either sell you the part or help you do the DIY or take your money to do it for you. In fact, Paul and I did a DIY on this. I almost forgot about it. Paul and I did a DIY on this, so I will try and link that up as well. It's a really easy job. Couple of things you need to know about it, but it's really not that hard. So if you've experienced intake manifold failure and you want to or you know need to upgrade or replace yours, make sure you get the newest revision. The part number on the newest revision is 06J133201BH. One of the other crummy things is generally when stuff like this happens, we sort of stumble upon it. I didn't realize that this has been updated until Paul had reached out to me and asked me if I knew anything about it. And I'm sure I sent him some kind of text that said, uh, I don't know. But thanks again, Paul. I appreciate you. Thanks for letting me know so that I could tell everybody else about these new updates. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Questions, comments, you know what to do. Hey, if you like this video, throw the thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe right here on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that bell so you get notifications or over on the blog at humblemechanic.com. And hey, if you want exclusive videos from me, discounts you can't get anywhere else as well as VW Audi training manuals that I build. Be sure to check out the crew membership program. There's a link down in the description. All premium stuff, awesome discounts, Eurowise, Sonic Tools, Black Forest Industries. The program is built to pay for itself each year for you guys. So check that out. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.